Nico Rosberg finished Sunday's race seventh for Mercedes, but Michael Schumacher could not repeat his Canadian heroic port. A seventh place finish, I suppose, best result for Mercedes and best result I could have wished for. Yeah, as I say, they do. They seem to do okay in qualifying and then just hold people up throughout the first stint of the race. And what is it with Mercedes and just holding people up? It's, it's, it's amazing. We saw it in Monaco. We saw it in uh, Valencia. They just seem to be just two cars that are just having a train of other cars remember the Truly train in, in Formula 1 used to be the little where uh, Jano Truly gets, qualifies well then holds people up in the race depending on his strategy and everyone have to get past him but no it's now the Mercedes train the Shumi train um, Rosberg both Rosberg had a couple of cars behind him and Schumacher had a couple of cars and it seems to be you know are they that bad on their tyres or are they too easy on their tyres that they're not getting the speed out of them they need to work that out Mercedes it's just not it's not the year they wanted they thought they have one bedding year when they bought brought into Braun and uh, you know if Michael Schumacher the development would surely be uh, through the roof you know he's a great test driver as well as, well as he's a race driver but this is not what they want this is not when they've come back to the sport for year two now they should be hassling knocking on the door of Red Bull and they're just not they're not even knocking on the door of McLaren really which is more than anything they'd want to beat their customer team so yeah this is not what they want Michael Schumacher's got himself into way too many incidents again Nico Rosberg's keeping his head down but again he can't do too much he's doing the best he can do Mercedes throughout the week the top speed trap so why is it they're not in amongst the front runners do you feel oh this is due to their magic um, rear wing isn't it the movable rear wing DRS they're supposed to have the best system due to it being the biggest flap I don't know the technicals of it but apparently you know they are the best when it comes to top speed because of that because in qualifying and such you can use it or well qualifying practice you can use it wherever you want um, I don't know why they could be there's more to Formula 1 there's much much more to Formula 1 than top speed I would believe that the Red Bulls aren't even slightly uh, up there on the top speed track They're, all their speed comes from like fast corners and slow corners with the diffuser and such unless when it comes to Spa maybe or Monza itself maybe the Mercedes will be a threat there because that's where that's where top speed counts Toro Rosso's Jaime Alguasari recorded back-to-back points finishes with an eighth-place finish in Valencia. And Paul, apart from the obvious, uh, Alguasari will have been a contender for driver of the day. Yeah, there was a lot of action going on down the field, and for once the director uh, went and showed us, which was nice because there's nothing going on up front. There was like a nice little battle at, at one point with him. Uh, uh, Suto, yeah, yeah Suto, yeah, that was, and we didn't see the end result of that. But again, a top, uh, kept his head down, top ten uh, finish, points finish course with the points now I don't I keep thinking it's top eight but it's top ten I keep never adjusted to the new points I don't know why but yeah and he's got to keep performing like that there may be a seat opening in the Red Bull camp soon the the main team may have a sister team may have an opening for if Weber they part company with and the first place they're going to look yes it's not going to be the only place they look but the first place they'll look is their junior team if he keeps putting in good performances he could be sitting next to the other Seabass uh, on uh, Red Bull number 2 so yeah put in the performances Jamie and in the interviews he gave after qualifying and in the race he was uh, certainly bullish about his future in Formula 1 yeah I mean I say he's obviously he must feel secure he must have some sort of contract that makes him feel he's not you know going to go anywhere but he just after a race like that you know you got to take what's not always in Formula 1 you know that your car will come to you in, in a team like into like Tyler Rosso you can't be guaranteed anything you might fail to finish you might be involved in someone else's incident at the start so when the good days come you've got to be happy about it and yeah and I say keep performing like that and the top teams will be looking into him Adrian Suttle had a solid weekend for years. he finished the race in ninth. Suttle also managed to make it into Q3 for the first time this season uh, a much needed result for Adrian and Force India yeah uh, it's nice to see them in Q3 but obviously um Paul De Resta was doing the lion's share of that. Um, it's nice to see after the great debut of De Resta, you know, it's like Suter was put into the sidelines a bit. So I think he needed to get a performance in there. As, hey, this team is not just about De Resta. Hey, I'm still here. I've been here for a while. Look at me, everyone. Who was the one that you know? <laughs> who was the one that was there when Fisichella was there or whatever? So he's been around a while in Force India, and, and he must be their favoured son. And hopefully he'll uh, he's le- learnt from De Resta on like some tricks and new lines because De Resta's come in and used to blow him away for the first. So say, wasn't he? He was finishing ahead. So obviously he's, he's took heed and he's said, right, I've got to up my game to show this rookie who's boss. And and yeah, top ten finish in qualifying. It's probably the most remarkable bit of his weekend. You can't quite, you know, when you start that high in qualifying for for a junior team, for a lower league team, should I say? Um, you know, it's all up in the air. You can then go forward backwards. You don't know where it went. But again, a, a nice little battle which we cut to. It's nice to get their sponsors on TV occasionally. Um, nice little battle and uh, a great little. Uh, great finish for Force India 
Paul De Resta was in the hunt for some points, but unfortunately came home in 14th. And De Resta, along with Jensen and Lewis, will be hoping for a strong result at Silverstone. Yeah, he's obviously, a, you know, he's come through the lower leagues of junior formulas. Every driver worth their salt, and not just British drivers, has a knowledge of Silverstone. Okay, they changed the track last year, but, you know, he was there racing. And it's only three or four corners, but it's the uh, first sector where you get most of the time and that's the brave one but yeah he, he want to he want to do better you can say about a 14th place finish apart from the fact that you know he didn't make any silly mistake the rest you know 14th place what can you say not great but now he's got to look forward to Silverstone obviously every British driver looks forward to Silverstone and uh, hopefully the home fans will give that second lap advantage what Nigel Mance used to say and she, I think he'll be uh, just a little prediction he might do well to get into qualifying uh, the final qualifying himself this this week once again both Williams drivers Pastor Maldonado and Rubens Barrichello finished outside the points uh, Paul another weekend where Williams didn't score any points and this year's turning out to be a frustrating one for them isn't it yeah I mean think of all the illustrious this illustrious um Williams cars the past the one that dominated two eighty eight you know all the, all the great Williams cars um Actually, 88, no, no, one. <laughs> I just realised that was a McLaren year, but um, this 97, Mansell and PK. But, um, yeah, and this is not what they're, they're here for. This is one of their worst seasons. This is the Judd year, that was 88. This is worse than when they had Judd engines and second at Silverstone was the best they all year and they rarely qualified. And, and, you know, this is one of their worst seasons in Formula 1 and this is sad to see a, such a great team. Are they going the way of Lotus when it was first in Formula 1? Are they just gradually falling back and back and back? Or are they? Can they rejuvenate themselves? Can they go? For, what can? What is their trick? You know, they don't seem to have the big backing of a manufacturer. They don't seem to have the money as, of the top teams. It's sad to see Williams in this state, but you, you know, the last one a race in 2004, and that seems a lifetime ago. Moving up from GP2 to Formula One is always a huge jump. Um, Aldenado's really struggled, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, it's confusing that. I mean, uh, the lower for spectator the lower league series are really good I love GP2 to watch and they teach you like you know side by side racing and such it's like well and when to uh, plan and overtake and then they get to Formula 1 and it's all ah well it's a completely different world you know you've got to plan your pit stops and your strategies and your tyres and all this and it's like a completely different world GP2 and, and especially GP3 are more like you know, on track combat that's what they teach you the racing skills they don't really teach you strategy skills and maybe that's what or tyre management because the races are a lot shorter so maybe that's the, the, the trick he's missing at the minute He's, you know, he's not had the greatest of seasons. He's been in versus accidents and such and such. But you know, in a car like that, you're not going to be, you're lucky to get points. So it's not really his fault if he's not. You, know, you could say he's doing the best that he can do with Barrichello alongside. You think, you know, that's with all his experience, he'd be doing the best he could do too. So it's a great combination of youth and experience. You can see why Williams have gone for it, but it's not at the minute. And once again, Team Lotus finished ahead of both Virgin and Hispania cards. Uh, Lotus now uh, do seem to be getting much closer to the much uh, more yeah. established teams. Yeah, it's great to see Lotus. We thought, you know, a given a winter, uh, that they may be so close to, uh, you know, beating the top losses of the force injured this world, getting in the lower leagues of the top ten, getting toward least Sauber or, or, you know, one of them teams. Lotus, I think, are the best of the new teams. I think it's quite easy to say that, you know, they are beating... HRT and Virgin but we want to see more from them we want to see them come forwards and forwards and finally get some points and to end uh, all 24 cars finished the race and uh, reliability this season is pretty impressive isn't it yeah I don't know if that is a positive though as a fan you know you want unpredictability you want random uh, you know I remember the old races you know if, if a race like that was boring at least some people would drop out and you get a, like a you know that is bad for the Lotus of the world that all the cars in front of them will finish the race that in the days you remember when the feel good results when Jordan would nick a point or even Minardi point because the cars in front of them would break down or spin off and crash and drivers these days make less mistakes and cars and tight teams themselves make less mistakes and engine failures are very very rare so it's good for the you know for the more cars on track and you know, more drama but for the lower league teams it's not that good because they want you know the only way they're going to get a point is 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 if a, a car or a few cars in front falter so yeah good for the sport also not at the same time Paul thank you very much for coming in no to problem. review uh, European Grand Prix uh, just a reminder that next week uh, we'll be doing a special British Grand Prix preview looking ahead to the Grand Prix weekend at Silverstone we'd like you uh, to tell us your favourite British Grand Prix of all time and thoughts on the new Silverstone wing uh, you can get in touch with us through Twitter at Formula 1 Fancast or at Baggies 20 to keep up to date with latest Formula 1 news, visit www.formula1fancast.com and you can follow us on Twitter at Formula 1 Fancast.